most of the water area looks like. As you can see, some guys fishing out there. I'm not quite sure, well I'm pretty close to where the visitor center is, but uh, I'm not quite sure what's out there. They have what they call a museum here. It's really just an old mill house with a couple informational plaques. But, you know, that's there if you want to see it. Got a little dugout canoe and stuff. Pretty simple though. So I think I'll go walking around. I'm not going to stay here for very long today, but we'll see what's here. As you can see, the water level is actually pretty low this time of year. It's been relatively dry recently, so a lot of these trees don't have water at the levels they typically have. There's also some trash down there, typical stuff, but uh, to be honest, I've never really been at a place like this, even though I've lived around swamps like this for a while. Uh, I've honestly just never been to, you know, for example, the Okefenokee Swamp, which is relatively close. Um, never been there, never been to a kind of environment like this. If you go to the other parks in the area, you don't see anything quite the same. Now, Georgia doesn't actually have natural lakes, but they do have natural swamps, especially in the south specifically. But So this is the kind of stuff that you're going to see. But again, it's just not something that I've been familiar with. So it looks like this is actually the beginning of a hiking trail which I'm not in the mood to walking today. I was just sort of checking this place out. So I probably will turn back and look at, I wanna look at some of the campsites, but as you can see, it's pretty big. Um, it's a loop, one loop that side, one loop that side. And I think over there, as this sign says, it's a county road, it has electrical poles through it. But I'll probably turn around, I'll go to the campsites and see what they're about, because I might end up staying here eventually. So I asked around, and apparently it's not a seasonal thing, why the water is so, so low, because we're in an area that should be covered in water, so consider this a privilege, but apparently what's going on is they're draining the lake for some reason, and they're going to be putting the water back in, I guess, in a couple months. So you're seeing it as it's typically not seen. This is, this would be the swamp floor, so it's sort of weird, it's very mushy. If I like really force my foot in there, it'll go down. Uh, I don't know, it's just really mushy. I feel like, you know, I'm gonna fall into it. Maybe I shouldn't be walking out here, I don't know. <laughs> but you know, got your little roots. There's a name for those things, I forget. We have them in North Florida, but I forget the name for them. But uh, speaking of which, everything's covered in Spanish moss. You might not be able to see it. Actually, you Yankees probably don't know what Spanish moss even is. Uh, here's some of it. Yeah, it's this kind of stuff, it grows on trees. All It's all over the place if you, you know, live in Florida or South Georgia. This is sort of like Central Georgia, maybe Central South Georgia, so... Anyway, so I'm gonna head back where I came from. I was on this dock over here, which is, of course, way lower than it's supposed to be. In fact, it was actually, mm, excuse me, sort of sh shaking when I was on it. Probably dangerous. Maybe I shouldn't be on it, but uh, anyway, I'll walk back up. Oh yeah, watch this. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's not gonna fall or something. It feels like it is. Getting seasick walking up it, but yeah, this is usually, this is a dock for, if you have some kind of boat you put out here. Now this park is interesting because they actually have what they call, uh, well, they don't have a name for it, but they have like trails, except for in the water that you can follow. I think, you know, like breaks through the trees. So if you look on their map, it has a bunch of tra um, uh, trails like that. Now I'm gonna try and get to these campsites. Now, of course the campsites that I care about are the primitive campsites. Georgia State Park has all these funny names for camping sites. You know, there's like Pioneer Camping, that's for like groups. There's like, I don't know, Normal Camping, which is sort of lame because you have water and electricity and you can do Boomer Camp, well they don't call it Boomer Camping, but you can camp in an RV. They have all that in that portion of the, the uh, camping area, which is, I don't know, sort of manicured, but I'm gonna, I might walk to the primitive camping area. Uh, as you can see, no one is here. This is like the, the dock and primitive camping parking area. Um, but I might walk to the primitive camping area and that's like no electricity, no anything. They might have water somewhere. I'm not quite sure, but uh, 
I don't know if I really want to because it's like half of a mile out there and then half of a mile back. Or no, 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 not half, a, a mile and a half out and back. And I haven't eaten all day. I'm like sort of hungry, but maybe I'll go see them. Actually, one more note. You might see out here all these trees. Actually, you might not be able to see from this angle, but maybe if I get a little closer. These trees are all, I think, planted. Okay, yeah, I'll go from this angle. You may be able to see that these trees are planted in rows. So these are like grown for pine, which is really, I mean, very common around here, but I, I just find it weird that a state park has trees growing like this. Like they're gonna harvest them. I don't know, maybe they're actually gonna do that, but either way. Anyway, as I mentioned, Georgia State Parks has, uh, have a bunch of names for their camping sites. And these are primitive camping which I think are the most most hardcore, most like literally primitive. They have other ones called walk-ins, which I think are similar to this. You walk into them, but like you have to park somewhere else and go in. But uh, I think they have water and other amenities. I'm pretty sure these have absolutely nothing. So we'll see. Uh, but the trails, of course, are still marked, so you don't totally get lost. These are all blue. And it's sort of nice, it's by the swamp area, so. You get at least something to look at, but uh, in the park, so it's February right now. It's been abnormally warm. It hit like 80 a couple days ago. Uh, I was at an of another park earlier today just to check it out as well. It wasn't quite as memorable, but um, yeah, there were actually a lot of people here, but there are not very many here, which is, uh, I don't know, sort of unexpected, but you know, I guess it is February, even if it is pretty bearable weather for camping. So, now they have a couple feeders for, I don't know, birds or something, I'm not quite sure. I don't know the whole, how this place works or whatever. Um, anyway, I find swamps like this, they're sort of a part of my psyche. I don't know how to understand it. This is gonna be sort of a weird note. Again, as I said earlier in the video, I've never actually been to one of these kind of swamps. But when I was a kid, I used to have weird dreams about them. Like weird, I don't know, like there's some psychic reality in my brain about them. I used to have like uh, dreams that I was like in a hovercraft racing through like the Okefenokee Swamp or something. I've never even been there, but it looked pretty much uh, exactly like this in my dream, you know. Uh, I don't know, maybe I was playing too much Diddy Kong Racing or something. You know, as a kid, you do that kind of stuff. Anyway, so it'll probably be a little bit more before I actually get to the primitive campsite, so I'm just gonna flip it off and show you when I get there. Okay, there was a really big bird out there. I was trying to get it, but I think it, I think it left. In terms of wildlife, I haven't seen that much in the park, although I will say on the way here, I have seen like a million like uh, road-killed bobcats, whole bunch of bobcats in the area. And you know, your typical stuff, I don't know if you know the, wildlife of you know sort of south georgia but it's mostly you know if you if you drive down you'll see a bunch of dead armadillos or possums or i don't know what else is there but well i'll just say bobcats i don't see that much but there are definitely a lot of bobcats out here so uh is there anything else we hit i'm trying to think yeah i'm not quite sure On my way to the primitive camping, I've run across what they call the pioneer camping area. This is a group camping area for like Boy Scouts or I don't know, whoever else orders it. I think they have a road that comes in, but these are just sort of bunk houses. We got some bug nets, but it's nothing fancy. It's just really just a covering, very simple area. And a lot of parks in Georgia will have this, these, uh, Pioneer camp or yeah, pioneer camping areas. We got an eating area, a really big grill. So yeah, it's sort of devoted to people who oh, they even have water. Psh, sissies. Yeah. Anyway, it's developed or devoted for people who come in groups. I've never actually used any of these facilities, but uh, I don't know. Maybe they're interesting. Okay, I finally found it, or at least the first one. There, are, I think, are three campsites in a row here. 
Let's see what the first one looks like. And of course, these do not stick out. Honestly, I do not even see what's up here. It's probably literally like a fire pit. And that's it. There might be more. Let's see. Oh, I can sort of see it. Yeah, these things are really remote. They're even pretty far. I mean, they're relatively close if you go on this side. But, yeah, you have to hike a good bit in to get to it. Now, this isn't too far from the Pioneer Camp. Just a couple minutes ago, you can look back over there. Well, actually, maybe if I get on the top of this hill, you can actually see the Pioneer Camp. So it's not too far away. But it is way more remote than any other thing. All right, I see a fireplace with a grill. That's fancy. And they have a nice little tent pitching area. No water, nothing fancy in sight though. So here's where you're supposed, where you're supposed to pitch your tent. There's where you light your fire. And that's about it for the primitive camping. I forget how much these go for. If you want to stay in one, if you want to reserve one, I, it couldn't be more than $15, I don't think, a night. Um, and usually when I come out to camp in a place like this, I usually wait till there's some kind of discount. Although, honestly, in Georgia State Parks, especially with these primitive camping ones, if no one else is reserved, you can probably just sneak in. Um, you didn't hear that from me. Of course, that's true in a lot of places as well. So, just as long as no one's reserved it already. You know what? I, I think I'm just going to not take the trail. I'm going to cut through... Because this was sort of a long walk. Well, it wasn't a long walk. It was only like one and a half miles. But I was at this other park earlier today. And I've been walking on the trails here. I don't know. I must still walked. I haven't eaten anything. And I probably walked like 15 miles today. Uh, not 15. Maybe 10. Either way, I'm just tired. I'm hungry. I want to get back. And the best way to do that is probably get lost out here. Okay, there's the pioneer camping areas. So... I'll just make my way towards them. Didn't even notice this before. This is the Pioneer camping area back there. But someone built this little shelter. I don't know, maybe just Boy Scouts doing it for fun or something, but uh, eh, it looks viable. It's coming apart a little, but a little pine straw would fix that. So, nice little lean-to. Anyway, let's head back. I can't wait to get some food at my favorite restaurant, Waffle House. This video is brought to you by Waffle House. Actually, that's not true. But if Waffle House wants to sponsor me, I will advertise for Waffle House in every single video. Had to walk through some thorns there. Anyway, let's get back. All right, I'll get there eventually. <laughs> I'm cutting through this area. It couldn't be more than a couple acres wide, but uh, this should lead me to the Oh yeah, there's a little trail there. I'm not lost, thank God. For a second, I was worried that Dave Politis would be talking about me on Coast to Coast, but uh, I found some kind of trail. It's all good, kids. Won't have a, like a Blair Witch type event here. Oh, look at that. It was even the trail I was on, the blue trail. Look at that, I saved myself at least half a mile. I don't know why people build trails that are just meandering. I don't know, maybe that's the point in a state park, but. Anyway, all right, minor adventure over. I'm back in my car. I made it. I mean, it wasn't that difficult, but uh, so yeah, I really like this place. I'll probably come here to camp sometime soon. I enjoy it. It's different than most of the Georgia state parks I've been to. Um, the primitive camping sites are remote enough that I don't have to worry about boomers all the time. So I enjoy it. Yeah, I definitely recommend it for any of you guys who live, I guess, in the area. You can look it up yourself. I mean, I don't know who actually lives around me, but... So, I'll actually be uh, going to a bunch of other parks uh, sometime soon, just because A, I have a car now, <laughs> and B, I decided to just go ahead and get a, a year pass to all the Georgia State Parks, so I can just park on any one for any amount of time, uh, so that, that's nice. So, I've already gone to two today, so it'll add up pretty quickly. So, yeah, I enjoyed this place, definitely recommend it, and uh, I'm the only question now is do I want Waffle House's crappy steak and eggs, or do I want the uh, All-Star, or whatever they call it. All it's not All-Star. Is that like Denny's? I don't even know. You know what I'm talking about. But anyway, that's it. So I will see you guys next time.